if you want to experience a realistic and authentic Middle Earth, then you need to check out Middle- No, no, no. I'm gonna have to stop you right there. Ladies and gentlemen, hail and well met. My name is Adrian from Game Reviews Malaysia and I welcome you back to a new MMO Top 10 because I love MMOs, none more so than Lord of the Rings Online which happens to be the first MMO I've ever played. Lotro will be celebrating its 10th anniversary in 2017 and there's never a better time to jump into Middle Earth than now. If you're a new player who has never heard of Lotro or a returning player looking for reasons to jump back in, here are 10 reasons to check it out right now. Number 10 fair free-to-play model. Lotro's developers Turbine Studios is often credited for the free-to-play model that they've implemented in 2010 when taking the game from a subscription-only based model to a free-to-play model, with tiered status such as pure F2P, premium status, and of course subscriber. As a new player, it costs absolutely nothing to download the game and start playing, and new players will have access to a couple of starter regions that is sufficient enough to get them up to level 25 or so. What's great is that the epic quests, which are the main story quests revolving around the player and their involvement in the War of the is completely free to play beyond the starter regions. While players can theoretically play through the entire story arc up to level 105 for free, it will be a grind and spending a few bucks in the in-game store to purchase a la carte quest packs or expansions to unlock more regions will become necessary. What makes the free to play model fair is that you can earn the store currency called turbine points by simply playing the game and completing deeds and achievements to buy these quest packs and content which often goes on sale multiple times a year. And unlike other MMOs, the free to play restrictions aren't that horrible and one can get rid of most of them by moving to a premium status which only costs a purchase of 5 bucks worth of turbine points from the store. Number 9. 9 years worth of content. Being a 9 year old MMO, you'd expect Lotro to have a ton of content and you won't be disappointed. Besides the attraction of the PvE questing and storyline that will satisfy your Middle Earth cravings through 5 expansions and 16 quest packs, the game offers loads more content to cater to different playstyles. If you enjoy dungeons and raids, then you can check out the classic group instances such as the Rift in Angmar, Os Dunhoth in Anandwaith, and so much more. Some instances even scale to the current level cap, and while the older and more popular ones don't, there's plenty of legacy kinships or guilds out there that do run them on level if you really want to try them. The raiding scene is also starting to pick up again after a couple of dry years, and in the past 12 months, Lotro seems to be showing the endgame community more love by introducing more instances and even a new raid, after having said that the raiding community wasn't a priority in previous years. There's also endgame content that you can choose to do solo or in a group, such as skirmishes and big battles. Now, big battles may be the least popular of all the endgame content, but at least you can run them on your own and you won't have to be level cap, as big battles will scale you up automatically. There's just so much content to go through, so if you're stepping into Middle Earth for the first time, prepare yourself for an incredible adventure. Also, next Monday, a new update is coming out that further fleshes the story into Mordor, so it's a great time to get involved. Number 8 server consolidations. Before the server consolidations took place in 2015, Lotro had 22 servers, not including Russian servers. Today the game has 10 in total, 5 for the US and 5 for the EU. It's no secret that the player population on a lot of the servers outside the big 5 were getting really low, my beloved home of Rittermark included, and the consolidations proved to be a good move by Turbine to keep the game afloat. As a new player, this simply means you can expect high populations on any of the remaining servers, and you will have no problems finding a group of people to play with on whatever time zone. For returning players, it will be nice to see the world chat lively again if you've been playing on an empty server previously, but do expect the occasional world chat rubbish and trolling. If your home server has closed while you were away from the game, do not worry as you can still transfer your characters off the server to any of the remaining ones for free. Number 7. Deeds, Achievements and Titles Lotro offers an incredible amount of mana progression to complement the core gameplay, and that's something that newer MMOs often tend to overlook. Deeds and achievements are a plenty in the game that players can grind to complete for rewards, which includes turbine points to spend in the store, virtues which are equipable passive stat bonuses, class points to spend in your class trait trees, and finally cool titles that you can wear to show off to your friends or your kinship members in the game. And on a side note, there are so many titles. I think it's fair to say that Lotro is the perfect game for completionists, and even if you're not, you won't be forced into grinding for them all, except maybe for class trait points because you'll need them to uh, play your class. Number 6. The Cosmetic System 
I'm a firm believer of the phrase, if I look good, I play good, and Lotro's cosmetic system allows me to do just that. Player outfitting is robust and there's plenty of awesome looking gear in game for all occasions. There's outfits for parties and events, or if you want to look regal in a Rohirric or Gondorian armor, you can do too. Cosmetics can be dyed in a variety of colors, and if you need some inspiration, check out Lotro fashion blogs like the Starry Mantle, Lotro Stylus, and Material Middle Earth. You won't be disappointed. Besides outfits, there's also cosmetic pets, weapons, housing decorations, and more that offers you a lot of customization options to play the game your way. Lotro is definitely one of those games that makes you want to dress well in Middle-earth to look and play the part of a hero in the Third Age. Number 5. Player vs. Monster Player Aw oh, yeah. One does not simply talk about PvMP without getting into a heated debate, and here's why. PvP is a passionate subject in Lotro as it is with other MMOs. It's a staple activity that we've come to expect from MMOs, but in Lotro's case, many feel it has been overlooked especially when it comes to balancing the classes or introducing new content. However, as a newer player, don't let that deter you as PvMP is a unique Lotro experience that you should experience for yourselves. First of all, you get to play on the creep side as the armies of Mordor and can play orcs, spiders, and wargs against the free peoples of Middle Earth, and PvP takes place on a large open map that can be ridiculously addictive and fun. PvMP has been one of my favorite things to do in Lotro, and there's just something special about the creep versus freeps dynamic, and even today you can jump into the Edenmores on prime time to witness and take part in large group versus group fights for fun. Obviously, Lotro's PvP definitely has issues, but it's one of those things where players still go out anyway because it has become a lifestyle choice rather than a grind. I highly endorse PvMP as creeps or freeps as it's another layer of progression in Lotro that offers substantial amounts of fun. Number 4. The Music The best way to enhance player immersion in a virtual Tolkien world will be through music, and I will say that Lotro does indeed have some solid soundtracks to complement the game. Certain regions have its own themes, like Rohan for example, where you can hear the sweeping notes of the violin and you will immediately sit up and say, yes, I am truly in the realm of Rohan, thanks to one man whose name is Chance Thomas. Lotro's music is atmospheric and in later parts of the game does a good job at evoking emotions from the player, often making me reflect about my Lotro adventures, how far I've come and what lies ahead. Yes, that is pretty deep, I will admit. Number 3 loyal to the books. Without spoiling anything for players who've not played through the epic quests or read the books, Lotro's main quest arc and regional quests does a good job at staying loyal to the books. Your actions as a player will indeed be tied to the Fellowship of the Ring, but from a behind-the-scenes approach. And for the most part, it is lore-appropriate and logical. Turbine does employ an in-game Tolkien lore master to their credit, and while they have bent the lore slightly on occasions when it comes to introducing new classes or raid bosses, they only seem to be filling in loopholes or expanding something within the book with a cohesive representation in-game, unlike some Middle-earth games that downright does the lore a disservice. If you are a Lord of the Rings junkie that wants to appreciate the culture, the regions, and characters of this rich world, then Lotro has provided you with the world and platform to do so. Number 2. Player Community While I may be speaking from my 6 years of experience on the game, I think it's widely known that Lotro has one of the best MMO player communities, period. From server to server, you will almost bump into players that are friendly, helpful, and share a common appreciation for the game and the IP. The community also branches out into role-playing, and the in-game music system has definitely created a lively player event scene that occurs regularly. For example, every year on the Langevel server, large amount of players gather atop Amonsul to watch the Battle of the Band competition, otherwise known as Weatherstock. Outside the game, there's podcasts and player-run websites such as Lotro Players and Lotro Reporter that will keep you up to date on all the latest happenings in Lotro, on top of providing guides and other resources that will be valuable for new players. Overall, the core community is positive and looks like it will remain so for a long time to come. Number 1. Last Authentic Middle Earth Ultimately, Lotro is not just an MMO. It's an authentic Middle-earth experience that has been brought to life and it's just amazing to be able to explore the huge open world full of iconic locations such as Moria, Rivendell, and Minas Tirith. 
plus being able to interact and play alongside characters that we've come to love from the books and even the movies. Now I don't want to talk about the game's licensing and its future because I live in the now and I play in the now and the now for Lotro is looking good. And you do get the feeling that should this MMO for whatever reason die tomorrow, we may never see another MMORPG like it. Make no mistake folks, this is your last chance to experience a living, breathing, virtual Middle Earth now that the movies are all but over and we're almost at the pinnacle of the story in-game, being on the doorstep of Mordor. But who knows how long this adventure will last, and with talk of a new expansion coming out next year, I say again. There isn't a better time to jump into Lord of the Rings Online to experience everything before the end of the Third Age. And that wraps up my list of 10 reasons to play Lord of the Rings Online. If you think I've missed anything or would like to debate on some of the points, do leave a comment below and let's get a discussion going. Is Lotro the perfect MMO? Of course not, no MMO ever is and Lotro does have some problems and issues that I will be talking about in my next video that will be coming out next weekend. So if you'd like to see that, do hit the subscribe button and follow me on Twitter for more. Do remember to like the video if you enjoyed the content and for more on MMO Top 10s, you can click the video playing on the screen right now to take you to my most recent video. Once again, my name is Adrian from Game Reviews Malaysia or Hafelheim on the Landreville server in Lotro and I thank you for watching.